up, everybody? Welcome into the next Pats podcast. Back at it again from Super Bowl 57 here in Phoenix, Arizona. We've got a couple more great guests lined up for you in this episode. We're talking to Patriots outside linebacker, pass rusher extraordinaire, Matthew Judon, as well as former Patriots corner, Malcolm Butler. Plenty to get to with both of these guys. Matthew Judon does a phenomenal pitch job trying to sell the free agent class of 2023. Come one, come all. Come for the seaport in Boston. Come for the four seasons in New England. Come because your car won't get broken into. Yes, we talk about all of that and much, much more with Matthew Judon, including his thoughts on Mac Jones and where he sits going into year three, not only as a player, but as a leader. And is there a difference between being a captain and a leader? Some fascinating stuff from Judon, Malcolm Butler as well. But first, let's get to our chat with Matthew Judon. Very excited to have with us here on the Next Pets podcast. Matthew Judon. Matthew, thanks for being with us, man. No problem. Thank you for having me. How's everything going? You're coming off of a Pro Bowl appearance. It got a little wild at the Pro Bowl this year. Things were a little different. How did you feel about it? I think uh, I think the aspect of the Pro Bowl this year was uh, kind of better. Better. It, we really wasn't worried about injuries and, like, tackling and all that. And we actually could compete. It got competitive uh, at the end. So, uh I think that was better for it. And then uh, I didn't know the big influx or influence that flag football had until I actually was there and when seeing kids from all over the nation and all over the world actually, like, there playing back-to-back games. So uh, that was pretty cool. And I think just for them to see us doing it as well and, like, okay, well, I'm on the right track. It seems to be getting more popular every single year. Your game seems to, and I don't know how you feel about this, but it seems to be, it's dramatic to say it's getting closer to flag football every year, but it does seem like it's getting harder for guys that play on your side of the ball to do your jobs. For instance, the league is now talking about a new rule change where you can't quote unquote hip drop tackle, which has led to some, I guess, ankle injuries. You're smiling a little bit. Makes me feel like maybe you've heard that news. What do you feel about it? Uh, I think uh, that's that's difficult to kind of judge and the speed of the game. And you're trying to get somebody down, you know, but I think as defenders, we just go with the rules. Like, you know, 20 years ago, horse, talent, horse collar was legal or, you know, jumping and ripping somebody's head off, spitting down their throat was legal. But – I don't remember that part of the NFL, <laughs> man, but was, I'd have to go back in the archives of NFL films man, to find that. It was crazy <laughs> back then, but uh, but now uh, now we just we just adapt, we just adapt. So whatever they call is legal or illegal, that's how we gotta play the game. And uh, I think that's just gonna be a difficult call to call, but it, it might be like uh, one of those things where like land down quarterback, it's just kind of difficult. And sometimes it get called, sometimes it don't. Sometimes you can roll, sometimes you can't. So uh, it's, it's just difficult. But it, it feels like sometimes for you guys, when it comes to things like hitting the quarterback, it, it's kind of however the league is feeling in that moment. moment, moment yeah. Which is, again, it's a moving target for you. It makes your job a little bit more difficult. Uh, listen to this transition here. Part of your team that had some difficulties this past year, was on the offensive side of the ball. You've already made some changes. The team has already made some changes there. Bill O'Brien's going to be coming in to be the offensive coordinator for you guys. How apparent was it to you, Matt, maybe over the course of the season? Obviously, you're on the defensive side of things. But how clear was it that you guys did need a change? You needed a new voice, a fresh set of eyes to be able to to get to where you needed to be offensively to compete the way you guys wanted to compete? Uh, Honestly, I really could care less like if the offense rolling and when they had some games it was rolling it would it might have seemed few and far between but we put up some yards we put up some numbers we just wasn't putting up points so we just got to execute better in uh the tight areas which is the is a uh red zone but honestly uh i think with the hiring or acquisition of bill o'brien and having one person focus on being an offensive coordinator and getting that group uh, together, it's going to be good. I, I see nothing but positive coming from it. But my job for him right now is just 
make it as hard as possible for them to get yards and count. And so when they do go against a, a moving target or a live opponent, that it, it feels it feels natural, it's seamless, and then we take off from there. Did you wonder why things were configured the way they were on the offensive side in terms of the coaching staff last year? Nah, I, I mean I really don't get into that. I wish I wish I was a player GM, uh, and I can call some calls, but that's not that's not up for me to do. And then once you once you start doing jobs that's not yours or jobs that you don't have. Like, you know, you can't be the camera guy, the, the uh, audio guy. Like, that's 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 difficult to do everything. So uh, my job was to go out there and stop the opposing quarterback, running back from scoring, and I, that's what I was trying to do. It does impact you, though, and, right? Uh, I mean, in sure. terms of even if it's just something like time of possession, you know, you guys were on the field a lot as a defense in some of those games against some really good quarterbacks, and you, and you still held your own. You guys had a phenomenal year on that side of the ball. But it is the ultimate team sport, and that, I think, is why. The offense does impact the defense. Did you feel that way last year? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the, we, I mean, we we drive and thrive off one another. Like, if the offense holding the ball and we going out there and getting three and outs, it's easy to play that game. But uh, we don't we don't always sign up for easy. And so that's what that's what it was last year. It wasn't always easy at times. It was, it was smooth and, and effortless, but – at other times, we, we signed up for that job. We signed up for, okay, we need to get a stop. We need to get a turnover. We can't let, the, uh, uh, we can't let them score touchdowns. And that's what we signed up for. And uh, that's, what, that's what we did. Like, I think everybody, you know, kind of flipped and, and did their role and, and helped us and get to our defense where we wanted to be. We came up short, obviously. But, uh I think we did a good job. As somebody who's worked against him in practice the last two years, what kind of quarterback can Mac Jones be? Very good. Very good. Very dangerous. Very poised. Very cerebral. But I think he needs uh, to get there. It's, it's not going to be easy. Uh, we all know how this league is. Uh, if you don't do one thing or that somebody think you should be doing, you start to hear rumors and you start to hear negative talk or you start to, and then if you continue to do that, then you start to believe it. I think uh, what Mac has to do is he has to believe in who he is. He has to believe in his skill sets and his traits, and he need to get back to work. And not saying he hasn't been to work, but that's what the all season is for. It's for him to improve. It's for all of us to improve and for uh, all of us to get better. And when he comes back, he's going to be a better quarterback for it. Can you sense that he was a captain last year, but is he getting to that point where he has the respect of the locker room to be considered a, a leader for the team, not just for the offense, but for the entire group? Yeah, I, and I think uh, a lot of people don't understand the difference between a captain and a leader. And so... Uh, what is the difference? I think I think for us, uh, the captains was who we voted on to... Uh, to talk for us, to speak for us, to have a voice for us. And then uh, the leaders of the, of the group was, you know, like Dev. And, I mean, they, they also was kind of captains, but, like, Dev, uh, Ben, you know, Matt Slater. Those was, like, the true leaders and the catalyst for us. Like, and, uh, and D.A., those were the guys that, like, okay, when we, when we all get into a huddle, we listen to them. When we all have success and somebody got to humble us, we listen to them. We are, are we, we in a pit. We need somebody to speak to us. We listen to them. And that's what, that, and that's what, it, what the big difference was. But uh, he is a guy that can be that. He is a guy that can be that. He just, like, uh, he's very young. He's very young. And uh, he, a, he a little green behind the ears and in some situations and some places that he hasn't played in or situations that he haven't been in just from throughout his career. And that's not a fault to him. It's just because he hasn't played in this game long enough. But when he does and when he uh, handles those situations with grace uh, and how he handles most situations, I think uh, he's going to be a great leader. I wanted to ask you about your Rob Mayo, because he's been in the news a little bit yeah. this offseason. Ownership clearly wants to keep him around. They're working on extending him, making sure he's here for the long term. What kind of leader is Gerard Mayo, and, and 
how much does he help the entire group? His, his title is linebackers coach, but, but how does he help all of you guys in that room? I think the biggest thing you can say about Mayo is he always answers his phone. And, uh, no matter the time, no matter the day, no matter what he got going on in his life, he answers the phone and he, and he there. And he, if you need to joke around, you need some encouragement, or you just need help, uh, he always answers the phone. And so regardless of what he do, does on the field and for our defense, because almost everything, but just the person he is and the leader that he is to our defense and to, our, to the people on our defense, he answered the phone for anybody, any time of the day. Uh, and so, like, and that's hard because, like, he's a he's an adult. He got, you know, four or five kids. He he got he going through stuff, but he gonna pick up that phone and he gonna make sure he got enough time to talk to you. And that's rare. Yeah, very, very. I mean, especially in today's day and age, it feels like where it's everything's text, yeah. social media. Yep. You know, that's how you're oftentimes hearing from people. You heard from one person. The last thing I want to ask you during the Pro Bowl to get back, we'll come full circle uh -huh. here. During the Pro Bowl, we caught a, a quick glimpse of. You, I believe you were mic'd up, and it was Derrick Henry uh -huh. asking you, hey, how do you like playing in New England? Yeah, and he yeah. said, actually, I love it. Yeah. Why? Because uh, I, think, I, think, I think the perception around the league is that it's a really hard place to play and to work because of the, the environment and the, you know, it's sort of a, for a long time, has been a building where there's been stress in a, in a good way to kind of push players. But why do you love that? I, I think I love everything about football. I think it's easy to love New England if you love football. And so, uh, you know, leaving leaving out of the building, even though we get out early. Everybody be like, y'all get out late. We get out pretty early. But, like, leaving the building around 8 because you didn't get treatment, you didn't stretch, you didn't hit the cold tubs, you didn't hit, you didn't hit everything. I, I try to do everything I can do to be better for the next game. Like, I like that. Like, that's – that excites me. Like, like winning excites me. It, and it's been a place that has won so much. Like, I just want to feel that excitement. And so, for that, I love New England. And then the city, like the Boston, the Seaport area, like all that stuff is pretty dope. And they got everything going on. They got a basketball team, baseball team, hockey team, uh, great concerts, great shows, theater. Uh, when it's warm outside, you know, you can hit Cape Cod, you can hit the beach. You can, like, so you really can do everything. You can get a uh, four-season uh, you uh, experience in a great city. So, I mean, you know, if I, if I was selling it, I'd tell people to come to New England, come play with me at Foxborough. But, you know, and you got, like, five states right there rooting for you. So, like. Business always you get, booming. You get five, and I would say even half of Connecticut. So call it five and a half. Five and you a half. You get five and a half. But, uh, you know, it's always business always booming. If you want, if you're looking for a market, if you like want to sell stuff, you can sell it in wherever. If you're looking for a market to buy stuff, they they got concepts down there. They got it presidential. They got some of the best, some of the best shopping. All right. So so you and hear tax that? Is not that bad. You hear that? 2023 free agent class. All right. All you offensive tackles, you receivers, you, uh, I don't know, maybe corners out there. That's what I'm saying. And your, your car not going to get stolen. You, you can leave your car. They be parking it for you. You, you know, you don't got to worry about your rims or nothing. Houses is nice. When um, NFL teams start hiring recruiting directors, they don't do it yet. Yeah. But I think you might be a trailblazer saying, as far as I'm, that goes. I've been, I've been recruiting for a couple years, so. You know, hashtag. Any big names that, that you guys could end up with this year because of that? come to the Patriots. Any big names that, that you know that are nah, free agents? See, I, no, no, that's no. tampering. I can't leak nothing yet. It's not It's not. Right. Started a new free league year. Yeah. Started a new see, league year. Tampering. All right, so Jacoby Myers, John Jones. How about those guys? Those guys, yeah, that's not tampering. So just oh, those yeah, guys they, will watch. They're on, they on the team. Yeah, they're, they're on, on the team, team still right Wait, now. They already know. They, they well, they know, but you're reminding them. You're reminding them. But, you know, John Jones can stay here through a bit of – a contract signing. He could have left. He could have. He could have left. He decided to stay. He yep. decided to stay. So it's really up to Cole. But I think Cole going to be back. I just, you got any uh, insight on that? Any inside information? I have no that? insight. I, I'm going to have to hit him up after this. Okay, we'll call Jacoby Myers right now. We'll let you go, though. You got plenty right. of people that want to talk to you. Matthew Judon, thanks Thank for being you. with us.
Jacoby Myers, I'm sure, watching the podcast, listening to the podcast, as he does, I'm sure, every single week. And so we got a little bit of, a, of an additional push from Matthew Judon there. We'll see if uh, NFL insider, Patriots insider Matthew Judon can hook us up with any Jacoby Myers leanings one way or the other when it comes to his future contract in the NFL in 2023. The biggest, in my opinion, the biggest free agent that the Patriots may see walk out the door this offseason. But now let's get to our conversation with Malcolm Butler. It was eight years ago, can you believe it? Eight years ago where Malcolm Butler won the Patriots the Super Bowl. 2015, February 2015, the 2014 season against the Seahawks. You remember it well. He does as well. We talk about how that changed his life. We also talk about how last season things worked out in New England when he returned for his second tour of duty with the Patriots, why it was so short-lived, and what his relationship is like with Bill Belichick right now, as well as what's coming up for Malcolm Butler, media mogul, a documentary in the works, even a book. Maybe we get some more answers on why he didn't play in the Super Bowl against the Philadelphia Eagles in early 2018. We talk about all that with Malcolm. Here he is. Very happy now to have with us Malcolm Butler, Patriots great. Malcolm, we're back in Phoenix. The scene of the crime, shouldn't call it a crime, scene of the greatest play in Super Bowl history, depending on who you ask. How exciting is it for you to be back here? Man, it's very exciting, man. Uh, so many memories. Um, seems like yesterday, but uh, what is eight years ago, man, I made one of the greatest plays in NFL history, man, and I just, it just was, it's just unbelievable, man, and uh, just an honor, just an honor to be here. Life changed. You know, we're sitting here on a Thursday before the Super Bowl. 2015, it was the 2014 season, but 2015, the, the Thursday before the Super Bowl, you're thinking what? Are you thinking that you're even going to have a role in this, this game coming up? Man, I was just sitting here. At, uh, it was media week. You know, I'm sitting there by myself. Nobody knows the rookie. You know, I'm just talking to myself, joking with my teammates, being a, being a young cat, not expecting to play in the game. And you're right, uh, life's changed. A couple hours later, a few days later, well, that Sunday, it should most definitely change. Is it true that that defense was a defense you really hadn't even run all year on the goal line with the number of cornerbacks that you, you guys had in the game? It felt like that was sort of a rare look that you guys had there. Yeah, most definitely. As I get older and, you know, start uh, getting intelligent uh, with football, man, you, you don't see goal line three corners. You don't see that. And I never ran that before. And I don't think I, I don't think I ever seen the defense run that before. And uh, it was man coverage anyway. So if I got this guy, it's simple. But yeah, that was our first time really running that. You hear Brian Flores yeah. scream your name. What's going on in between your ears? He said Malcolm Go. And then if you go back and look at the video, I actually said I got you. And I went in there and did that. So I kind of knew what I was doing. Confident guy, even though he was that rookie that nobody was talking. To. I got. I I feel like I must have come up to you at some point at your table that year. I don't want to say nobody came and talked to you, Malcolm, because, you know, you used to be, though, I remember you, the rookie in mm -hmm. the locker room. Yeah. Kind of an under-the-radar guy, but there were there would be times you were the only guy in the locker room, and I just sidled up to you and say, hey, what's this What's this rookie got going on here? And we had some good conversations. Yeah, most definitely. But I was just, it was just an honor to even be in the NFL and, and, at, a, and at a Super Bowl game, especially that. But, you know, my coach always told me, Malcolm, just prepare like you're going to play. You know, you never know. You might be, he said, you might be, you might, you might put West Alabama on the map. And he spoke that into existence. And we got to see you back in New England for round two of your, your Patriots career. How did that go? How did it end for people that back at home, I think we're really excited to see you back with the Patriots, but maybe are a little unclear on how that whole thing broke down. Um, I just got, I just got injured, man. I just got injured and you know, the NFL is a business, man. Um, just got to move on, man. You got to move on. If you can't, you can't play in the tub. You can't make the club in the tub. And you know they got they got great players, man. And you know life goes on. And like I just said, the NFL is a business, so um, it is what it is. Got nothing but love for those guys. Got nothing, love, nothing but love for Boston, Bill Belichick, the whole staff. What is your relationship right now with Bill? We just heard Bill on the Tom Brady podcast. You know, he, they're in a good place. It seems like. Again, you made your way back to New England, but what would you say your relationship is with Bill? You know, I think people, Malcolm, back home, especially this week, obviously they think of your great play that won them a Super Bowl, but they also think of the Super Bowl that you didn't play in as much as everybody wanted you to back at home. So what is that relationship with, uh, like with Bill right now? Um, I think we got a great relationship. You know, we, we, got, we had to have, well, we got, we have a good relationship because 
you know, I wouldn't be able to come back to New England if we didn't. You know, it's still something there if I'm able to come back after, what, three, four years. So, you know, it, it's never been perfect, but, you know, Bill uh, has been a guy that always believed in me. Uh, he honest with me, and I'm honest with him uh, whenever he talk. But, um, yeah, it is what it is, man. To steal a line from, from Bill Belichick, it is what it is. We hear that from him all the time. What do you say to people who ask you about that Eagles Super Bowl in terms of what happened there and why he didn't play? Um, I just say it's a coaching decision. And, uh, you know, um, it's, it's a documentary. And, and I also got a book coming out, too. So um, I spill the beans there. But, you know, I, I, I'm really not. I'm an inside guy. I don't like to tell everything. So uh, just keep down the commotion and, you know, just keep living my life. and. Keep being peaceful. But well, getting into the media world now, too. So that we're going to see a documentary and a book for Malcolm in the near future here? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely, man. And so we'll get some answers maybe on yeah. that night yeah, yeah, against yeah. the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, you most definitely going to get some answers. But it's pretty simple. You know, it was a coaching decision. But, yeah, I got some more answers for you. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you could just give us, like, a little teaser. You know, just a little taste. You give us a little taste. You'll, you'll see when they come out, man. It'll be out soon. Awesome. Malcolm Butler, thanks so much for being with us. This was great, bud. All right, thanks. That's going to do it for this edition of the Next Pats Podcast. Hopefully you've been following along with all of our podcasts this week. Early in the week, we had the Eagles Brass, General Manager Howie Roseman and Head Coach Nick Sirianni, as well as Patriots running back LeGarrette Blunt dishing on Bill Belichick. We had Rob Gronkowski and Ashley Adamson, Ashley from the Pac-12 Network. We talked we talk some draft there with her and some receivers specifically from the Pac-12. We also had the Hall of Famer, friend of the podcast, great friend of the podcast at this point, maybe best friend of the podcast, Kurt Warner on Mac Jones and Bill Belichick and where they're at going into the 2023 season, as well as the great Steve Palazzolo giving us, giving us an analytical perspective on things. So some great, great guests. And believe it or not, guys, we've got more coming at you. So stay tuned with the next Pat's Podcast. We've got you covered.